Well, hello and welcome. It's great that you've been able to join us for this, the third of our daily devotions based in 1 Corinthians 15. Today we're going to be looking at verses 29 to 34, where Paul writes these words to the Christians who lived in Corinth. Now, if there is no resurrection, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. We said yesterday that the Corinthians had doubts and questions about life after death. Paul's first argument to them was to say, look at the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus is the first fruit. So if Jesus rose from the dead, then there's resurrection to new life for those who come after. His second argument is far more personal. Paul says to them, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then what you and what I'm doing as Christians is a waste of time. A few years ago, Rosemary and myself went on holiday to southern Italy. It was a great holiday plan, three and a half weeks. I spent hours, weeks, lots of weekends planning what would happen during that time. I booked flights, booked a hire car, booked five different places to stay, organised trips, decided which beach we'd get, beaches we'd go to, arranged a trip to the opera. It was a great holiday. Well, it was for the first week. At lunchtime on the Monday, I went to take a photo of a building. It was a very ordinary thing to do. But while taking the photo, I slipped and badly broke my leg. And we ended up cutting short the holiday, me being flown back to Britain and rushed into hospital for emergency surgery. As I recovered from the surgery, one of the thoughts that came to me was what a waste of time it had been all those weekends trawling through websites, reading books, planning a holiday, most of which was cancelled. Paul says much the same thing, that putting themselves in danger, fighting wild beasts in Ephesus, I don't think he means lions and tigers, I think he means those who were opposed to him. And facing death every day is a waste of time if there is no resurrection. We might as well just go out partying every night, having a great time with no care for what comes next. You see, what we think about the resurrection of Jesus and what we believe about the dead being raised to new life will shape how we live our lives. See, the resurrection of Jesus not only gives us hope for the future, but it also guides how we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Paul in that passage picked out two particular areas. The company that we keep, those friends we have, the people that we allow to influence and direct us. And secondly, our willingness to go on doing the things that are wrong. If we think that this life is all there is, then we're unlikely to care much about either of those issues. But what does it mean for us to live in the light of Jesus' resurrection? We can look at the early church, churches like that church in Corinth, and see what it meant for them. There was undoubtedly a commitment to proclaiming the gospel, a commitment to prayer and to regular meeting together. But they also looked out for those who were vulnerable in their own societies and their own community. In Acts 5 we read that they shared everything they'd got, especially with those who were in need. 
And in Acts 6 we read that the, the job of looking after the widows in their community was so large and took up so much time that they had to appoint special people to do it. See, there's a danger, isn't there, in this time of coronavirus, that we become far more concerned with ourselves and our own needs, that we ignore those around us, and especially the vulnerable and the needy in our community. And even at this time of lockdown and at isolation, there are things we can do to help those and to look out for those who are needy and vulnerable. See, if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, we have to ask ourselves some questions. If we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, what difference does it make to the way we live our lives? What do we do because we believe in Jesus' resurrection? And what things don't we do because we live in Jesus' resurrection? Those are quite tough questions. And you may want to take a little while just to think about those for yourself and ask yourself those questions and mull them over. You see, the implication is that if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, we don't just live for ourselves, but we live in ways that proclaim and extend the kingdom of God today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you that Jesus rose from the dead. And Father, we pray that that would influence and shape the ways we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Father, transform us to be the people who build your kingdom. Amen.